What's up everybody? Exciting! The winter is over finally for motorsports, but we were very busy in making sure that our babies over there, the beautiful ones with the four wheels, are perfect. Yes. Pretty much? Yeah. You said the winter is over, but the temperature is very cold this morning, <laughs> but the sun is out, so it should be better. So yeah, we basically took our cars completely apart, looked at every single component, every system, look where we can improve and we put it back together and today we make sure that all the systems run as they're supposed to. So I would say enough of talking, let's jump right in. Let's go. So this is how it's gonna work. First of all, we're gonna make sure the power plants are good. So we're gonna just focus on the engines. Second, we're gonna make sure those engines stay the way they are, which is lubricated and cooled. So we're gonna check for any fluid leaks. Third, we're gonna jump into, can we stop the car once we get going? Because so far we did not have any speed or load yet. And then of course, suspension setups. It's gonna be fun, let's go. New engine needs to be softly warmed up, right? Exactly. The main thing on these very modern engines is actually, in quotes, only the bearings. They need to yeah, bed in a little bit. They need to know what's on the other side a little bit. We need to drive the cars on a specific RPM with a specific torque for a specific amount of time. And in old engines and forged engines, this could take up to a full day. With those modern engines, we can really compress it down into a couple of hours. But it's still important because you don't want to mess up those new engines. Exactly. So let's go. We took off with our cars and we tried to hold the RPM as constant as possible. So we choose second or third gear and with left foot braking or with the e-brake or with both together, we hold the RPM constant and we were able to adjust the load, but also for each and every step, we kept the load constant. That means the throttle position was really constant. Then we increased step-by-step -step RPM and load in a specific manner. And in the end, the engines were running perfectly fine as set. Those modern engines actually almost don't need the run-in, but we just wanted to make sure that everything is nice and comfortable. What is a little bit challenging is to not fry the brakes while doing so because there's a lot of load once we went to higher RPM, higher load scenarios. We always made sure that we have enough time in between to cool down the brakes actually because yeah, they had to take quite a lot of load and they heat up very fast and we didn't want to fry the brakes obviously. That's why we went in uh, big circles and we basically, in quotes, only had the load on one straight and the rest we took to cool down. Mainly the brakes, not the engine. A very important thing is to keep the car alive, to have pressure, to have temperatures off fluids, of coolants, of lubricants in the car in check, because otherwise engine and maybe the whole car might be failing. failing really yeah. And there's also another fluid, brake fluid, very thin lines, but very important, because if you step on the brakes and it's not working, you know what happened then. So that's why we start to drive around quite carefully, just listen, feel and also smell if there's anything wrong. Yeah. Then we come back to the pits, the guys check if there are any leaks or if everything is dry and if everything is good, then there's a check in the box for the motor most vital parts and then we can continue on one step further to pedal to the metal let's go and we took off for the next time with our cars as said we are very very conscious about all the senses that you have so you always listen to everything and the smell especially for fluids is the most vital sense because it can really tell you if there's something leaking, like each and every fluid has a distinguish smell. So yeah, for example, coolant, uh, if you have some additives inside, you can smell them. Or if it's oil or if it's brake fluid also has some distinguished smell. So this is very important. And also while being out on tracks on the show and everything, all the senses really are there to control 
not only the performance in the car, but also to make sure that everything is running fine. I mean, we have all this MoTeC equipment to check the temperatures, the pressures and everything and give us warning lights, but like very small leakages, sometimes you can't see in the pressures or in the, in the temperatures. So that's why the sense of smell is very important when checking the basic systems of the car. And this is not only in the beginning, this is, as I said, or also continuing on whenever the cars are running. There is this German saying, wer bremst verliert, who breaks loses the race, but that's not always true. And that's why those babies have a quite important part for us and we did some work on them, right? Yes, so on a race car, you really play a lot with the brake balance. What does that mean? That means how much braking you have in the front and in the rear if you press the foot pedal. And you normally always want to have more braking force on the front because when you brake, the car tends to move the weight forwards and also it's way safer that the front tires lock up first instead of the rear tires lock up first. Because if the rear tires lock up and you slightly on, a, on an angle, it will start to rotate the car. And that's why we adjust the brake balance that front tires lock up first and not the rear tires lock up first. Actually, brake balance is an element of tuning your car according to your driving style and often overlooked. So give it a try. Another vital thing why in drifting you have more front brake bias is if you're in tandem drifting, you want to slow the car down. You often use the foot brake as it's the smoother way to adjust the speed. You can also use the e-brake. However, you always have to remember the tires are spinning at, a, at whatever speed they're spinning at the moment. Once you pull the e-brake, they are down to zero. Next thing, you release the e-brake, you leave the clutch in and the tires have to go up with their wheel speed to the speed that they had before. So this is quite a lot of things happening and a lot of upsetting the car. Also unloading the suspension in the rear. That's why normally I try to use the foot brake as much as possible and the e-brake only if I need to. And there also the front biased brake setup helps me a lot because yeah, you can even brake a little bit more on the foot brake without also slowing down the rears. Because if there's too much bias to the rear and you drifting, and you, in quotes, only want to slow down the car a little bit, you mainly do that to the front tires and you want to keep the wheel speed in the back more or less constant. And this is also a reason why in drifting, many drivers have a really front bias brake balance. Suspension, and now we're not talking about the spring and the damper in this case, but all the control arms, all the shiny, blingy silver stuff, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the dark art of motorsports. It's the most complex, almost, I think, probably one of the most complex parts designing, tuning, steering geometry. But we did, and it's still working, and it's even better than before, right? Yes, so now <laughs> we can also run a less aggressive set up in the front with the standard tire 275 35 19 that an m4 m3 runs as stock but with way more angle not hitting anything so i would say that's a success big success tick in the box for the suspension if you guys want a deep dive subscribe this guy might come up with some explanation about ackerman center of gravity kingpin Pastor, roll Strap, centers <laughs> center of gravity the bear of them <laughs> so yo dark arts for sure even though we had a lot of adjustability built into our front suspension, the cars in the past only felt happy and lively when we had a quite aggressive setup in the front. We changed some small bits in the rebuild and now we are able to also run a less aggressive setup in the front, meaning we can run less camber and also the bigger tire size. And therefore, yeah, the car just feels natural what you want as a driver is a positive feel that means like that you always feel what the front is doing and in transitions if you go from one turn to the other that you basically give the first impulse in the steering wheel but the steering wheel will turn by itself to counter steer more or less and you in quotes only control the rate at which the steering wheel is doing that with your hands and the front is very important in drifting as it just gives you the confidence and the feeling for the car. That's why this is a very important part. 
and we are super happy that we have so much adjustability and that we really with slight changes over the off season we could yeah even make the field bigger in which the front is working we're testing and we're finding gremlins which seems odd but it's good to find gremlins because the more you iron out in testing the less you have to wrench on the actual event which will be good hopefully and we just checked the setup again because we broke a steering pin which isn't too nice but we brought some spares as we were expecting it a bit now i just bring it to the setup of yesterday and we check the kinematics on the turntables again another important factor in the front is the lock stops meaning once you turn the wheel to the end that the wheels actually have a stop where they yeah just mechanically are stopped in angle because in drifting as you know we always tend to go as much angle as possible and we often use those lock stops and in my eyes you should always be confident approaching the lock stop that you know you can really go there and the car behaves as you expected to behave on the lock stop that's why we also played around a little bit with where we place the lock stops on which angle and how does the car feel and in the end we ended up in a good position where we are all happy with man what a way to open the season yes like cars are flawless almost almost flawless they stay together nothing burned no explosions no. Yes. <laughs> they work they stay lubricated they stay cold they make power they make angle they make smoke but what do you want yeah that's basically it but me as an engineer i always think about what we can improve next however i'm also super happy with the pre-season testing so season 2023 we're ready a lot of action a lot of traveling we're coming to a lot of places we've never been before so stay tuned check us on socials and follow us and see you out there on track bye 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 bye, bye.